Hi, right, welcome back. Hey, it's a beautiful uh, Sunday afternoon here in Oklahoma. We've uh, uh, definitely had spring arrive and uh, lots of rain, grass is greening up. It's uh, beautiful. It's a little windy, but uh, it's, it's beautiful nonetheless. That's one of the reasons why I'll be uh, filming inside today so that I don't get so much wind noise and stuff. But the uh, last video I made was almost uh, 15 minutes long. In fact, I had to uh, edit out some stuff uh, in order to make it uh, conform to YouTube's policy, at least for my account status. And uh, there's some things in there that it, it kind of left some holes. I want to uh, kind of fill those holes in. Talking a little bit about the Coca-Cola bottle opener keel on the decoy that we made. So I'm going to try to explain that. This will be uh, technically part five of the series. Uh, no, excuse me, part six of the series, and uh, it's going to be just uh, very short and quick and to the point, and then we'll get on with the decoy carving. So stay with us, and we'll talk a little bit about the Coca-Cola can opener, canvas back decoy, Coca-Cola bottle opener, can opener, can, canvas back. It's a canvas back decoy with a Coca-Cola bottle opener on the bottom for a cube. Don't know how else to describe it. Stay with us. Thanks. Bye. Okay. While uh, going to a uh, the Core Sound Decoy uh, Museum in on Haggers Island, uh, South Carolina, <laughs> North Carolina, <laughs> North Carolina, uh, I saw a skiff that was part of their museum exhibits, and on the the side of the boat, I think it's called the Gunnels, um, there was a bottle opener that was attached and uh, it had been painted over multiple times, but you could tell it was a Coca-Cola bottle opener. And I could just, you know, imagine the guys out working on these, these boats uh, in the Core Sound area that, uh, uh, you know, they not only waterfowl hunted, but they just made their living out there, which also included being out there in the summertime and I can just imagine drinking a, a cold beverage whether it be a coca-cola or some other type of beverage uh, I can just imagine uh, you know back then a, a cold beverage was a, a treat uh, usually enjoyed at a break or the end of the day it wasn't something they constantly sipped on and nursed throughout the course of the day you know in big gulp sizes so uh, I think it was a special, I remember as a kid that was a treat for us is to get a, you know, a cold uh, Coca-Cola in a, in a glass bottle uh, that came out of a water cooler, you know, that had circulated water, just something that was really pretty cool. So it uh, got me thinking as, as that was part of that heritage, I wanted to make something part of my decoys. And I, I came across the idea of uh, installing a Coca-Cola bottle opener uh, as a keel. Now, it doesn't offer a whole lot of weight. Uh, it does offer a little bit. And so uh, I decided I was going to put it on the bottom of my decoy. Now, what, what I had to cut out of the other video, just because of length, is this is the plate that goes to my, my uh, work uh, holder uh, fastening device made of the trailer hitch. Uh, and, and I had made this a long time ago. Well, as, as luck would have it, or good fortune would have it, the holes in the plate match up to the holes of the bottle opener almost exact. I've always kind of been stuck with the dilemma about, you know, once I put this on the bottom of the decoy, I'm left with holes that need to be uh, covered up by a keel. Well, I don't always want to put a, a wooden keel like this on the bottom of the decoy. Sometimes I want to go with something a little more traditional, uh, and that would be you know, just a pad weight or something, because I don't want to clutter up the whole bottom. I also wanted to use a leather tab as an anchor point, and so uh, the wooden keel doesn't really lend itself well to that. But the Coca-Cola bottle opener, like I say, it fit the bill perfectly. As you can see, they line up perfectly. So uh, I can use the work uh, holding device uh, and then I can fill those previously used screw holes up 
with the holes that are or the screws that are used to hold this on there. I can then put my leather loop attachment on here. I brand, et cetera, on there. So it, it, I've done one decoy this way before. It was not a vintage uh, opener like this one is. As you can see, this is the box that it came in. And the box is basically trash, but it is uh, something that, that uh, it came in. This one was made in the United States. Don't know how old it is, but you can tell by the box. It's probably a product of the uh, 40s or 50s, somewhere around in there. Uh, but anyway, I thought that when I saw that on that uh, skiff at the Core Sound Museum, what a great piece of waterfowling tradition that you could kind of work into a decoy. And at the end of the day, you can use your decoy to open your beverage. So, thought that'd be a great idea. Now, I'm going to touch on this real quick because this video is not going to be very long. Uh, in keeping with, uh, in keeping with, you know, doing things the traditional way, I wanted to show this uh, little thing that I made here. Uh, you say, what is it? Well, it is. Uh, at least I'm going to attempt to use it as a mold to make decoy weights, the mushroom style decoy weights for my decoys. Okay, now. What this is, these are weld on fence caps. Uh, we use them here to uh, weld on our pipe uh, fence post. Uh, basically, it dresses out the top of the fence post. Also, it keeps water from getting down in there and then freeze thaw uh, from getting in, down to the bottom and bursting your pipe out. So, what I did is I lined three of them up on a piece of flat bar stock, I drilled a hole in the bottom of the bar stock, uh, a fairly large hole, and I stepped it up and made it increasingly larger so that the cup, uh, where the cap would actually sit in the hole, and I could line them up, and I put a board on the top to line them up so that they would, they would all be uh, lined up the same, they would be uh, flat to the bottom, and then using a MIG welder from the bottom, I welded the cup to the bar so that it would hold it in there. Now, I then added this little wood fixture onto it. Uh, one, so that this wouldn't get prohibitively hot and uh, potentially affect my workbench, but uh, it would protect it. And then it would also give me a way of suspending a rod that would be used to once the hot lead is poured into the cups at a uh, level, you know, up there quite a ways, they're going to probably weigh a good half pound a piece. Uh, then I can, after I pour that in there, and I can do them one at a time because I really don't think I can work fast enough to do three and then get them set. But then I would, after the lead is poured in one, insert this rod, which can be held out of the way through this hole, lined up perfectly over the center of the cups. Put the rod in it, pre-made uh, brass uh, rod. I will flare these a little bit to get a little extra holding power and then drop them down into the hot lead so that they then become the anchor that goes into the, uh, the lead so that it will not, uh, you know, I can move it around a little bit, but I don't know how long, I haven't worked with lead that much, you know, that great a quantity of lead, so I don't know how fast it's going to set up. Anyway, prototype, haven't, uh, haven't done it yet, and uh, this will be, you know, traditional style mushroom uh, type uh, lead anchors to go with the canvas back gunning decoys that I've been working on. So, there we go. Uh, that's a short explanation of what I had to uh, uh, cut out of the other video and and kind of reshoot it to where it made a little bit more sense and could stand on its own. So, stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna work uh, not so much on the body. We kind of got it where we want it until we're ready to start working on in the video segment that follows this one. We're going to show how we uh, cut out the head and there's some tricks on how to. Uh, you know, cut profiles are easy to cut out, but then cutting 
top views out become a little tricky. Uh, so I'm going to show you some tips and techniques for doing that. Then we're going to start working on the head. And this, this is what becomes important whenever we start wanting to match it into this area right here. Once we get this established, we can attach the head and then we can further smooth out this transition joint so that it gives a nice pleasing shape. Another thing I didn't touch on, but I'll just go ahead and describe it here. As I mentioned, sometimes you can do the tail before, sometimes you can do it after. This is what we're looking for in the tail. Uh, this is half inch wood stock and uh, we're looking to thin this edge down. And, and, and unless you're looking straight onto it like that, this starts giving it one, a very thin appearance while making sure that it has a thickness that makes it very durable and uh, and so suitable for hunting and rough handling and uh, so that's I went ahead and did this primarily you can do it with any tool that you choose I did this with just a carving knife and a wood rasp and then sanded it smooth it's not rocket science so uh, I didn't want to devote a whole lot of video for it but I just wanted to describe what what I did. The thing I do want to point out, you can see it right here, a uh, little bit of a gap here that I'll fill in with some plastic wood, sand it smooth, and that's really just mainly to keep water and stuff from getting in there. It's not really aesthetically going to make any difference. Same thing here, uh, but uh, that right there is ready for the head attachment. Go make some shavings. You'll feel better.